Hi everyone, welcome back. I've been doing a little bit of machining on the lathe, but today I want to make my first proper part and it is for a bracket for a tablet holder for my exercise bike. Today we're going to be machining these things called hearth joints. I've only just found out what they're called. Um, I've been trying to figure out what these are for years and I finally find out the actual name. It is a hearth joint or a hearth coupling. But in a photography world, these are called rosettes and I've got a few of them on my tripod right here and I've got them on my light brackets and I've always kind of wondered what they are because they basically allow you to rotate but then obviously clamp and fix two shafts so they basically cannot spin. This is going to be handy for the, the bracket that I want to make because I want to have it at different angles. Now I've got all my dimensions that I need for this. It is quite a simple operation, I just need to turn and outer diameter, a hole through the middle, and then we obviously won't be doing the teeth on the lathe. I've got a few possibilities. I can do it on the CNC, but I'm really interested to see if I can do it on the fiber laser. So I've been doing some tests, and you may have seen me post this on Instagram, using the 3D slice with my 100 watt fiber laser from Monport, I can actually engrave teeth on this. Now these are obviously not dimensionally accurate, it starts to round out at the bottom. But for this application, I don't really need them to be perfectly aligned. The teeth are not gonna mesh perfectly. I'm gonna have a rubber washer in between the two teeth, uh, and that will obviously compensate for any sort of misalignment. I'm thinking that basically, if I can, as long as I can create some sort of tooth pattern on this, it should give me enough resistance to, to the torque of that tablet wanting to fold down. Now unfortunately I don't actually have any round stock the right diameter. I'm not sure how to approach it with the lathe because obviously you've got different parts, different diameters. I'm not sure to just buy a stock in perhaps a you know larger than I need diameter and then obviously machine it down or would you literally just buy stock for each and every type of project that you need. I'm not too sure so if you could comment below how you handle the stock requirements for your projects that would be really really helpful. What I have got is I've got this leftover block of aluminium so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop it into a it's gonna be a 50 mil by 40 mil and then I need to machine a 35 diameter circle from this. So that's what we're going to do first of all. We will cut down this stock. First, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. With state-of-the-art facilities to handle things like PCB etching, CNC machining, injection molding, and even 3D printing, PCBWay are committed to quality and affordable solutions for all your PCB and manufacturing needs. PCBWay can handle it all from prototype to mass production. Visit PCBWay.com today and check out their very competitive pricing and turnaround times. I've got the stock cut to roughly what we need it to be. Luckily, I've got a four jaw chuck, so we'll swap this over. I can literally just probably eyeball this because I've probably got enough stock either side. I've just made a little magnetic way cover, just got magnets so I can attach it to the cross slide here. It's probably a little bit too big. I need to fold it up it should hopefully give me some clearance so we've got the Albridge chuck here it's my first time using it uh, and it is a very very nice chuck I can see why everyone talks about it as you know it's the chuck you need uh, so far I'm really liking it first time I'm using a keyless chuck as well and I really do like that and it seems to be gripping onto them onto the bits very nicely I can use this as a little guide. Oh, there we go, perfect. So that's brilliant. I can use the uh, 3D print as a guide. Hopefully people can correct me if I'm doing this right or wrong. But yeah, I've just got this eyeballed up and then luckily I've got the 3D printed uh, part here centered so then I can actually check that there is actually gonna be material all around it. So when I machine this away, should be left with 35 mil, which is what I need and then I just need yeah, I need about 20 mils so I can just part them off as I create them. I only need two. So that looks to be good. So it's another, another little thing I love about 3D printers is that you can just quickly 3D print a little jig like that just to kind of help you save you some time.
As you can see, I do not have my tool set to the correct height because I've got a little bit of a dimple left over. You don't even want to see how I'm shimming these up. Uh, I've got a bit of steel and then I've got about 20 cutoffs of uh, some shim stock. And then I've even got some washers <laughs> to try and raise it up. I cannot wait to get the multi-fix to stop having to do this basically. But we've got it faced. We will just turn this down to the 35 mil that we require. And this took me all day to do because actually my cross slide was a little bit stiff. I wasn't really sure why. It turns out that the grub screws, I can't actually show you it, but if, you, if anyone ever has this problem, there's a, obviously a screw that is driving this, uh, this compound backwards and forwards. And basically the brass nut, it has some grub screws on it and I'm guessing it's kind of a way to apply tension to the nut. They had just completely come loose. The grub screw was no longer actually kind of making any sort of contact. So I just had to tighten it up and that makes it much more easier to move this now. And I couldn't actually use the power feed for the facing operation and that is why I decided to take it apart but I realized that you can actually access the screw down here. So I've taken this entire thing off and it's actually nice and clean now because I've, I've cleaned all the horrible motor oil that was on it, cleaned it all off um, and now it's all nice and clean. But yeah, you can just access those grub screws from the back here. So yeah, uh, if anyone has that issue, have a look at your nuts. It could be uh, the grub screws that have come undone. We've turned the outside diameter. I'm starting to maybe see some of the issues with not running coolant. Uh, this, as I was cutting it, it was actually getting uh, quite hot. When I put a little bit of coolant on it, I could see some smoke coming off of the, uh, the tool bit. So it told me that this was getting hot. And as I was measuring it, um, I was getting closer and closer to that 35 millimeter outside dimension. And then once I thought I had it spot on, I stopped measured it again a few minutes later um, and it had actually shrunk to 34.8 34.7 i'm guessing that is the thermal expansion uh, of the part and i was taking quite heavy cuts with this so it was generating quite a bit of heat i guess that yeah in the future i probably need to really think about using coolant i'd love to know what other people are doing with with this issue or if it is maybe something else i, I don't think i'm mis measuring it as i'm cutting it it looks like the DRO is accurate. We are close enough. It doesn't really matter too much about the outside dimension of this. I need to drill three holes um, so I can mount M3 bolts and this will then be attached to the, to the uh, arm of the bracket. So I could obviously mark this out by hand and then I could punch the, the three holes and then take it back onto the lathe and do the drilling for them holes. But I thought, why not try and kill two birds with one stone here? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw it in light burn. I am going to mark the holes where they need to go, but I'm actually going to leave it to run for a little bit longer and get uh, a little bit of a deep engraving in this, which will essentially be the pilot holes. I've just done a, a little quick test here. This is just a little one millimeter pilot hole. This can, you know, th th this can easily go as deep as you want it, really. Uh, I think this will actually work quite good for the, for the pilot holes. Maybe I could open it up a little bit bigger uh, this is going to be a 3 mil hole and I'm going to be using a counter bore bit to open it up for the M3 head which is about 5.5 millimeters. Let's get it set up on the laser and uh, we'll see if we can get this aligned properly. So we've got the pilot holes drilled on the laser and now we can go ahead and take it back into the lathe. We'll drill through these three holes and then we can face it off um, and then we'll probably do the counter boring on the drill press. We'll machine off this uh, back face before we start doing any more. Uh, I'm really glad that I've got this D1-4 cam lock spindle. I'm ready just in this small job alone. I've taken this chuck on and off twice and it is just very nice and quick and easy with those cams. So we'll get in the free jaw. I just got some aluminium uh, shimmer stock here that I'm just gonna kind of bend into a ring so I don't mark this nice surface finish that we've got here. I think, yeah, that'll do. It doesn't, 
really matter if it's not concentric because we're only doing a facing operation with this. I've got it in the four jaw chuck now. We will offset it and I'll use the uh, center drill to get each one of these lined up and then we will uh, swap it over with a three mil drill bit and then we'll drill these three holes. Okay, so I think we've got it centered on that point there. It takes quite a while jigging this around on the four jaw. First time doing it, so I'm probably a little bit slow. Three holes are drilled for the M3 nuts, and this is also the, the pilot hole for the counterbore bit, uh, which I would do at the end because obviously I need to chop it off. And I'm not going to go through the process of offsetting these all over again to do the counterbore bit. I think it's just going to be easier to do that on the drill press, and that's not super important because the counterbore bit, it does have the... Uh, the pilot guide to, to make sure you get it in position. So should be fine. All that's left to do now is to uh, part this off uh, and we need two. So let's do that now. I was just about to part this off and I almost forgot that actually I need to uh, bore out this inside relief. So then we have a raised outer edge for the laser engraving. So I can't actually show you because it's just too tight with a camera angle, but uh, I'm going to bore this out and then I'll swap it around, pie it off, and then do the same with the other part. Now ready to start thinking about putting teeth onto these uh, blank parts. So what I'm going to do is I first need to get some sort of jig set up on the uh, laser threaded table here. So I'm going to set up some just very quick jig with this little bit of leftover scrap aluminium that I've got. I plan to engrave two holes. Uh, that will be then that will be the position marks that I need to drill uh, to match this spacing of this threaded plate. Once I've got it locked in place, I am going to engrave a circle bang on the center of this lens, and I'm going to use it uh, for location of a dowel pin, and then the dowel pin will locate this part in the center of uh, my build plate. And then in light burn, I can just go ahead and add the, the engraving job to it. And it should be aligned properly then. I got the hole engraved roughly to the right size. I couldn't get a nice interference fit with it. I'm guessing it's because of the angle of the beam when you are using these Galvo lasers, but it could punch a hole in it. And then I've just put it into the arbor press and just pressed this pin uh, so it fixes in place. But now at least I've got a location for this uh, part. So we'll have a go at engraving the teeth now. You might not be able to hear me very well over this, 
But what I'm doing now is doing a test cut. So I want to make sure that we're gonna get the depth of the teeth right. I'm doing a 200 layer 3D slice engraving. And we're gonna see what kind of depth that we get. I've got it cutting just over the edge of the stock so I can actually see how deep it's going because I can't get my uh, calipers into these fine teeth. I'm really happy with uh, how these teeth have come out. I didn't really think this through though. Uh, I made the engraving the exact same size as the, uh, the dimensions of the part. Really, I should have just offset it a little bit because as you can see, it hasn't engraved fully all the way around. On some of them it has, because I didn't get it perfectly concentric. So what I'm gonna do is I'll put these together. Um, I will kind of clamp it into an arbor, a quick arbor I'm gonna make on the lathe, uh, and then we'll just take a little skim off so we can uh, reveal the teeth. And that should be it. And it'll be really interesting to see if these teeth do actually mesh. So I've just made a quick arbor. I've just got it bolted in here. I've got it true enough. So we're just gonna take a skim pass here so we can reveal the teeth now. I'm really happy with how these teeth come out. We've got quite a nice depth of the teeth here. And you can see that the teeth, they mesh quite nicely here. So I think this will do the job for the hearth joint, definitely. So the last thing to do now is to just counterbore these M3 holes for the socket head. So here is the kind of idea for the prototype of this adjustable arm. I'm probably gonna put a rubber washer. I think that if I was gonna do this again, I would make the teeth much finer. And if you look at the rosettes that are used on all of the tripods and light fixtures, they have very fine teeth. So your steps for where the teeth actually interlock are much smaller. You can see here, you need actually quite a lot of turn for it to actually kind of set into uh, the teeth here. But to be honest with you, um, with the rubber washer, they don't even really need to be aligned perfectly. Even if they are next to each other like this, you, you get a really good amount of bite into the rubber uh, from each side and it just holds it in place really well. This is kind of the idea that I'm thinking, obviously as you turn it and then you clamp this down, and then it is locked in place really nicely. I think this is gonna be more than enough to hold the iPad in place. I was gonna make one for the other side of the arm, but I think one will probably be more than enough to hold this in place. So thank you for watching. If you've got any other ideas that you'd like me uh, to test out with this fiber laser, I'm all ears. I'm having a lot of fun trying out different techniques with, uh, with metal making and trying to find ways to you know, incorporate into actually functional prints. I'm gonna carry on working on the full build for this uh, tablet arm, so stay tuned for that. But that is it for today, I'll catch you later.